What's up guys and welcome to round number 5 of the F1 Legends career mode. Today marks the halfway point in the season. We've had a little bit of a mid-season break. Uh, the last episode was just over a week ago, but uh, ironically I was actually at a racetrack. I was at Silverstone for four days, so that is why the series has been put on hold. But now, until the end of the season, we should be going two episodes a week. And today we are in Austria, a track that's been used um, sort of... I don't know, it's been in and out of the F1 calendar. Uh, it was um, the Österreich ring, I believe, back in the 70s and 80s. Then it was the A1 ring. Now it's the Red Bull ring. Obviously our home race. Let's see how everyone got on in qualifying. The forecast may have been mixed for the weekend in Austria, but the sun was out for qualifying and getting now into the real meat of it. And the big shock was that Michael Schumacher did not make it into the top 10 shootout whatsoever. He will only start 11th, more on his teammate later. The fifth row of the grid will see an all British affair with Jim Clark starting in 10th and myself starting just ahead in 9th. The fourth row of the grid is an all Brazilian affair and Lotus actually managed to get both of their drivers into the top 10 with Emerson Fittipaldi starting 8th and just ahead of him is the only McLaren Honda that managed to make it into the top 10. Once again it was Ayrton Senna trying to follow on from his victory in Monaco, he'll start 7th. The third row of the grid has 9 world championships between them, Juan Manuel Fangio will start 6th for the Mercedes team and Sebastian Vettel will start 5th for Red Bull. It was a disappointing qualifying for the Red Bull team at their home race, but of course it is a circuit so heavily dependent on engine power. The second row of the grid was filled with a couple of titans of F1 too. Nicky Lauda will start from 3rd for Ferrari, at well ahead of his teammate. And in 4th place is Alain Prost. For the first time he managed to string together a good qualifying, Renault finally finding some pace. The front row of the grid though was filled with two modern day titans of F1. Fernando Alonso actually managed to out qualify his teammate Prost to start second. Very good for the Renault team. But on pole position was Lewis Hamilton, arguably the best qualifier of all time. He'll start from pole position. Will he be able to take victory on Sunday? So as we take a look then down the grid, you can see that it wasn't much of a margin between um, Hamilton and Alonso at the top. And uh, again, back to uh, Lauda was only two tenths. The, the top ten, though, were only separated by just over half a second. Really was a tight one all around. Alan Jones, you can see there, just missing out on the top ten. Uh, Nigel Mansell, his teammate, will start just behind in a disappointing session for Williams. And you may have been able to see on the previous page that Nicky Lauda actually has a five-place grid penalty. So does Mika Hakkinen and so does Rubens Barrichello, but Barrichello will start from the back of the grid so it won't influence him too much. So here we are then, it is time for the race and we are in sort of sunset conditions here in Austria. Uh, a lovely, lovely setting here in the Styria Mountains and as you saw in the qualifying report, uh, Renault have been very much resurgent. Uh, we, again, with a little bit disappointing, did manage to make it into the top 10. But, uh, yeah, changeable conditions, as I did slightly mention there, are forecast for this weekend. And it looks as if rain is possibly going to be coming during the race. We're not 100% sure at the moment. But, uh, yeah, I went for a little bit of a wet setup, hence the pole qualifying. There we can see Lewis Hamilton, uh, who put his car on pole position yesterday. And we are going to be starting this race from P9 and uh, of course we were in the top 10 so we're going to have to start on the ultra soft tyres you can see everyone here uh, starting the formation like Michael Schumacher you can see there starting in P11 and I believe once again he has actually still gone for the ultra soft tyres so yeah it's going to be interesting to see you know how far they're going to go into the race I believe these um the Ultra Softs are probably only, get, only going to go about five or six laps. So, yeah, the, the, the strategy is very good, very much going to come into play early. You can see the Drivers' Championship on the right-hand side. We currently have a 10-point lead from Nicky Lauda after uh, he had another DNF last time. So, he's been pretty unlucky. And I think, uh, you know, every race that he's uh, finished in the points, he's won. So, he's going to be a big threat today. But there you can see Fernando Alonso starting on the front row of the grid. He's looking for his, his first big points of the season. And his teammate, Alan Pro 
Frost hasn't actually scored any points so far. So, yeah, very, very big uh, day for Renault. They are going to be starting P2 and P3 as a result of Nicky Lauda's penalty. So he'll be starting from 8th. But without further ado, it is time to get in to the Austrian Grand Prix. We're going to the five red lights now from P9. And away we go. The sun is shining uh, just in front of us. So it's going to be a little bit difficult to see off the line. And our teammate has had an awful start. Sebastian Vettel, he's the car on the inside. And he's actually gone into Nicky Lauda. We have had to run off the circuit just to avoid them. So that was very questionable from Vettel there. Not sure whether he is going to get a penalty for that. But we have lost out big time here. Just look at how many cars there are. They are absolutely storming past us. We're down into P16 after half having to run across the escape road. And, uh, of course, all of these guys are on, like, the super soft and soft tyres. So we do not want to be stuck behind these uh, when we are on our quicker tyres. But now, as we slot in behind the second Brabham, I believe, we've got uh, Jensen Button behind us, who we just seem to be attracted to in this series. And he's actually gone down the inside of us now. So we are running side by side with the 2009 world champion down into P18. We're going to go down the inside as we go into turn five, turn six. I can't remember. They've renamed the turn so many times here in Austria. But uh, we're just keeping it on the inside, keeping it on the inside curbing there. But it uh, looks as if Jensen has actually got past us for P17 and uh, yeah this has been a very very disappointing start you know we've been pretty lucky this season as, as, as I've mentioned you know Lauda has only actually finished in the points two races and he's won both of them um, so it, you literally have no idea what is going to happen in this series. All of a sudden, you know, Renault have become resurgent in this race. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to have to try, you know, keep a keep a level head. As I, as I mentioned, there is rain forecast for later on in the race. As we've got yellow flags up ahead, and uh, oh, Emerson Fittipaldi is out of the race. That is heartbreaking for him. He had a great start, and as we have to jam on the brakes, as it's a virtual safety car, uh, we're going to have to slot now in behind Jensen Button. But yeah, it was so difficult to actually stop for that virtual safety car. Uh, it didn't really give us much time to think at all. And uh, as we are on the run down to turn four now, we are actually going to take a look at Fittipaldi. He was running in P4 as well. It was such a good start for the Lotus driver. And they've been looking very good in the last few races, very handy. But his engine is given up at such an early stage. So disappointing for him. And now we're going to just take a quick look at the running order. So it's Hamilton from Alonso from Prost. So the front three are unchanged. Then in fourth, we've got Mika Hakkinen, I believe, at the moment. So, uh, yeah, he's... At, sorry, no, it isn't. It's out in centre. Um, so, yeah, he's on a really, really good start. He started in seventh. Then it's Fangio, um, Clark, and then Lauda. Um, my teammate, then the Williams cars and uh, Schumacher, and then it's just sort of the mid-pack mid, mid pack of the field. But the virtual safety car is now ending at the end of lap two. And we're going to have to get a good restart if we're going to get past Jensen Button. Of course, he is on the soft tyres, so it's going to be difficult for him to get his tyres up to temperature. And we're going to have to make a move quickly. We do so on our fellow Brit. We sort of squeeze him out a little bit there, but uh, still... Do leave him the room. And uh, you know what? Uh, for the sake of uh, Fake but fake Ghost Pirate, also known as Justin, I am going to call this turn, turn two. Uh, there was a bit of outrage when it actually became turn three last year. But I'm going to go with the traditional names. This is a traditional series. So that was turn two. Uh, anyway, we're going through the middle sector now. And uh, towards uh, through turn six and now towards turn seven, which is a very quick turn. And what a camera angle this is. On board with Jensen Button. And he goes down our inside, sticks his nose down there and to be fair to him it was a fair move no contact whatsoever and I'm pretty sure this is for the third race in a row we are actually battling with Jensen Button so we did it in Spain we did it in Monaco and now we're here with him again uh, this time we are in uh, in Austria of course but uh, yeah we're going to stay in his slipstream we are on lap four our tyres aren't looking great at the moment but as we're on the run now down to turn two the uh, the Remus turn we are going to go on onto the inside and just run him out of road. But uh, he actually keeps it on the outside, so fair play to him. We do manage to get the DRS, though, because we were behind in the, in the detection zone, in fact. So, uh, yeah, up into P16. Not something I thought I'd be saying on lap four, and something I hoped I wouldn't be saying. But uh, nonetheless, once again, on lap five, we are battling with Jensen Button. He's gone past us once again. This time, it's Mika Hakkinen who is in on the action. He had a very poor quality. 
qualifying. He was way down the order. I believe he actually started in 16th or 17th. So he hasn't made any positions up early on in this race. But uh, just like Button, he's also on the soft tyres. So he could come into it later on in the race. And Nelson Piquet is very much getting ahead of us um, up in front. So... I was thinking of boxing, but I actually asked what the weather report was saying, and there is rain forecast for about five minutes time, and you can see that Alan Jones again, it's another DNF for the Williams driver, I think he was running in about P10 or P11, but his engine has given up once again, Williams cannot get a break. Uh, it's really, really disappointing to see, and you saw him there pulled over on the side, he is yet to score any points, one of only five drivers I believe who is yet to score one of which is Alan Prost but we are not going to be scoring if we do that too much today we were off the circuit and into Jensen Button now there are a few cars that were in the pit lane at the end of the last lap so we've actually gone up a few places but this time it's Rubens Barrichello who's going to try and overtake us and at this point our race is just going down the pan completely uh, we're on the ultra soft tyres meant to be the quickest apparently, but uh, just doesn't seem to be the case whatsoever. Barrichello is past us, and we are down once again into P16, and it's pretty much like a net P17 or 18, but uh, still, we go side by side with Barrichello through this middle sector, and uh, going through turn three and into turn four, uh, that is a nice, lovely camera shot that we get there, obviously around the, uh, the Red Bull uh, sort of statue, I guess you could call it, in the middle of the circuit. A real lovely uh, part of the circuit, but uh, yeah, up in front, our teammate has actually come into the pit, so it's going to be interesting to see what tyres he's on. Now, you may recall it was pretty much clear, the sky at the start of the race, and now it is very much overcast, but he has actually fitted the soft tyres, and uh, yeah, that's going to be interesting, because... As I said, I asked my engineer, I asked Jeff, and he said there was going to be rain in about five minutes. And that was a lap or so ago. So we are now coming towards the time where the rain is going to start falling. And we are actually ahead of Lewis Hamilton. He was the race leader, and he's very much running away with this race. He was actually quite a way ahead of the Renaults as well. But uh, up ahead, we've got the three cars battling. So hopefully that works to our advantage. It's the two Brauns and Mika Hakkinen. So, uh, yeah, that's very much worked in our favour. And uh, we're in the slipstream of Hakkinen. Just pulled out of it to maybe make a move down into, uh, into turn three now into Schlossgold, uh, Schlossgold, Schlossgold, that is really a mouthful of a corner name, but uh, anyway, we've got Lewis Hamilton on our tail now, and he's actually going to try and go down the inside, he's opted for the super softs at this stage, so uh, again, he's a little bit tentative, not sure when the rain's going to be coming, but I believe you can just about see a few specks on track now, and our tyres are completely dead, so at the end of that lap, end of lap 7, start of lap 8, we decide we're going to come into the pit lane and fit the inside intermediate tyres. So uh, also you can see Red Bull double stacking, so uh, Vettel has also gone with that same mentality. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see uh, whether we can gain some time, and already the, the, the track is getting very wet, so uh, if that is the case, then maybe we're going to be needing the full wets pretty soon, because if within the space of a lap it started raining, and we already need the intermediate tyres, and now as we go down to the next corner, um, it's going to be interesting to see whether they do grip up, and sure enough, as we come around that final corner, uh, you can see that they are very much suited to this circuit. So yeah, at the end of lap 8, start of lap 9, there was a massive rush into the pit lane from uh, a lot of the front runners who, uh, who sort of, you know, put, put it off by a lap, and uh, to the right of us now, I believe that's Nigel Mansell, because of course he is the only... Um, only Williams left in this race, so he is into P10. We have slotted into P9. It's very difficult to say sort of what position we're actually in at the moment, but we have managed to make a pit stop less than everyone else. So, yes, yeah, suffering that pain on the ultra soft tyres was very much worth it. Also, I failed to mention, we actually did an extra lap in qualifying, which probably wasn't the wisest thing to do, uh, which is why our ultra soft sort of went off the cliff so quickly. But I'm glad I persevered because now we are in a very, very good position and uh, we are very much quicker than Andretti and in front of Andretti I believe is uh, Jackie Stewart so he's still on the soft tyres very very poor strategy from Tyrrell who just don't seem to have had the pace so far this season we go down the inside of Stewart and we were just completely offline and uh, we've actually been punted by uh, by one of the alphas completely my fault and uh, Mansell is back ahead of us now so uh, yeah that's pretty much negated that move that we made on the pit exit uh, also into the pit lane is Alonso he's had a poor strategy as well and it uh, looks as if he's stayed out too long 
and the Renault team, just when it looked like they were going to score some good points, look as if they may have shot themselves in the foot. But uh, yeah, we're going to take a look at the running order now. So it's Fangio out in the lead. He is followed by uh, Michael Schumacher, who again has made a pit stop less. In third is Andretti. Uh, fourth is Mansell, followed by me, and I'm going to actually get on the inside as we spin it because there is a safety car that has been deployed. So I just could not get on the brakes quick enough without running into the back of the likes of Mansell, and uh, I can't think who the car ahead was. But uh, anyway, we're going to take a look at why the safety car has been deployed, and it is the other uh, Alfa Romeo of Giuseppe Farina, who was actually just slowed down on the straight. Mika Hakkinen tried to go around the outside of him, and there is a lot of debris on the track. So I take this opportunity, while the safety car is out, to come into the pit lane. It is a very bold call, but I'm going to go for it anyway. Uh, so yeah, we are into the pit lane now to fit the full wet tyres. So uh, yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure that, you know, by the time the safety car comes in, that, uh, you know, it's going to be time for the full wets, or at least nearly time. Uh, so, yeah, only time will tell whether that is going to be the case. And uh, we are out now into the race in about P12 or P13. Very tentative on exit. And you can see there we get out ahead of PK. But PK then proceeds to overtake us on the pit exit. So you can clearly see that we were ahead of him. And then all of a sudden it says stay behind PK. So I try to overtake him here. And see what the game says. And it says return to correct position. So yeah, let me know down in the comments whether you think I should have actually been ahead of PK there. So yeah, that was disappointing. But obviously it's only one position. And behind the safety car, the running order is pretty much the same. It's Fangio from Schumacher with Andretti in third. Uh, Mansell there in fourth place. Uh, followed by Brabham, I believe, uh, in P5. Uh, just behind him is Nicky Lauda, obviously our championship rival. Jim Clark also still in the mix for points. And then Fernando Alonso has managed to sort of resurrect himself. Or it might have been Alan Prost, actually. I'm not quite sure. I couldn't quite tell by the helmet. But uh, there is our teammate. Uh, then you can see Jensen Button. Sorry, Rubens Barrichello once again putting himself in the mix. The other Brabham car and there, obviously, PK. And there we are just lurking behind him. So Jody Schechter as well, putting himself into a good position for points. But now the safety car is coming in. We can't get any sort of temperature into these tyres, which is pretty you know, pretty concerning, to be honest. Uh, because obviously, you know, we fell way back from the cars ahead. So, yeah, I was pretty concerned at this point that we had gone for the wrong strategy. Because as you can see, the intermediates are definitely the tyres to be on at this stage. And Barrichello is actually going to go down the inside of us. For P13, we have been relegated once again, another position. We, we're just losing positions left, right and centre. And now as we come up towards turn two, uh, we've got other cars just prowling behind us. And uh, one of which is a Renault car. I'm not sure whether it's Alonso or, uh, or, or Prost. So then we'll see who is in a good position and who isn't. And I think as we try and go down the inside of Barrichello there, uh, it is actually Fernando Alonso behind. So we do manage to get ahead of Barrichello. And a lovely little battle here. It looks as if he's going to come back down the inside of us into turn three. And is he going to be able to get, get it? No, we go down the inside and we actually squeeze him out slightly. And he has been tagged by myself. And uh, yes, it is Fernando Alonso just behind. But we're going to take a look at the replay to see what happened with us and Barrichello. So Barrichello sticks his nose up the inside. And there we just sort of pinch him out. So uh, I don't know. You guys, once again, can have your say down below in the comments. But uh Possibly a racing incident, possibly my fault. I don't think it was Barrichello's fault, but uh, yeah, you can see we are struggling big time here. Now, the stewards sort of took pity on us. Maybe it's because our tyres aren't at the optimal uh, temperature at the moment. So, Alonso and Senna, both of which have had questionable strategies so far, uh, they have got ahead of us into 13th and 14th. Uh, so we are back down into P15, and they are just pulling a massive gap on us. Barrichello actually does manage to get past us a lap later. It's telling us to come in. It doesn't have any faith in these wet tyres whatsoever. So, yeah, we, we, at the moment, I'm just thinking, you know what? We're just going to endure it. You can see the rain is cut, getting heavier. The track is most definitely uh, getting wetter than it was a few laps ago. I was just sort of asking Jeff about the tyre condition, and he said, you know, they're, they're, they're just about to come into it. 
So, yeah, I did persevere. But here you can see the battle for P1. Schumacher and Fangio, they touch. They touch. And they're both into the wall. And, oh, my Lord, 12 world championships between them. But that could not save them from crashing into each other. And just look at that. They are just... Oh, they've got everybody coming past them and Schumacher there just he was looking for the gap and the gap wasn't there It's very similar to that Mika Hakkinen and Giuseppe Farina crash that we saw earlier So I don't know you guys can once again have your say on all these incidents down in the comments And uh, oh as we go into the pit lane It is now time for the full wet and Senna has actually hit his front wing and everyone is going so slowly Into the pit lane. This is very strange So uh, yeah this is where I'm thinking, you know what, it has paid off. Because just look at how hectic the pit lane is. We're going to go sort of on board with Senna. So the two Tyrrells are in. My teammate is in. Uh, that's one of the Alfa Romeos I can see. And also, obviously, Senna. But, uh, yeah, they put the wet tyres on Senna. And they can't release him from the pit box. Because the Tyrrells are double stacking. And that is just awful for Senna. He had such a good qualifying. And it looks as if he turned this season around in Monaco. But eh, well, it looks as if it's just not the case at the moment. So, uh, yeah. As you can see, uh, the likes of Alonso, Barrichello, Piquet, they all stayed out uh, sort of an extra lap. And that may play into their hands. Because the pit lane was so packed, you can see they've actually emerged in P2 and P3. Now, we have a massive gap. We have like a 17-second gap ahead of them. So we're going to take a look at what the running order is now. So Alonso has put himself up into P2 and Barrichello into P3 as a result of their great strategies. And, and also Mario Andretti, you know, just left it that extra lap. And uh, it looks as if it's actually paid dividends at the moment. So Mika Hakkinen as well. Even though he had that incident with the other Alfa Romeo, he is sitting in P5. Nelson Piquet in P6. And uh, then Jack Brabham in P7. So... Yeah, it was very much a case of uh, playing the waiting game to go onto the wet tyres and the carnage in the pit lane. Two Renaults are in the points, and also Nicky Lauda has been relegated into P9. Uh, he could have been leading this race if it had sort of been a, been a clean race, but that is the case. And as we go on to lap 22, you can see now Hakkinen making another move on an Alfa Romeo, but this time it looks clean, and he has actually got through on Mario Andretti. They're going side by side. We're about two-thirds of the way into the Grand Prix at the moment. It isn't a do-or-die move uh, as of yet, but Hakkinen really wants to try and get up into a podium position, and it looks as if he's got ahead of Andretti, putting in, once again, a stellar effort. Uh, for the uh, the Alfa Romeo team. Lap 25 and it is dried up or starting to dry up now. So Fernando Alonso has come in to fit the intermediate tyres and uh, he, oh, he got a little bit held up there. I think it was by Mika Hakkinen because uh, the McLaren box is just ahead of the, uh, the Renault box. But uh, there you can see uh, behind him is Rubens Barrichello and then lurking behind him is, uh, is Mika Hakkinen. Uh, coming into the pit lane uh, next lap was myself. Not a fantastic stop, a 2.9. Um, oh, I can't. I actually can't quite see. It was at a 1.9. I can't quite see on my screen, but nonetheless, it was actually a decent stop for once. Well, not for once. I'm being a bit harsh there. Red Bull have been pretty decent to me this season. And we still do come out in the lead of the race. Nelson Piquet sort of did the same as me. Uh, left it an extra lap. And as a result of that, we sort of lost a little bit of time to Alonso. Probably about three or four seconds uh, staying out. So the gap was down to 11 seconds and we make a massive mistake. A big, big lockup. And that was just an uncharacteristic mistake for myself. I was just, you know, at this point of the race, it was getting pretty boring. I was at 11 seconds in the lead and I just outbraked myself, got one wheel on the grass. And then all of a sudden, the gap is down to four seconds to Alonso on a drying track where he's quick. But uh, just behind us, actually at the same time, uh, Mika Hakkinen was making a move on Rubens Barrichello for that podium position. So he's got himself up just ahead of the Brazilian. And that is brilliant stuff for McLaren who are starting to come into this championship now they had a slow start but Senna won last race and Hakkinen has had a very very good race this time this time out after starting so low down on the grid but we have got Fernando Alonso behind us on lap 31 that gap is just coming down uh, just slightly more each lap I believe it was down to four seconds there and on lap 33, we've decided, you know what, it is time to come in for the dry tyres. There's only going to be three racing laps left. 
So, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to come in and fit the ultra soft tyres. And just behind us, you'll be able to see that uh, Fernando Alonso also has the same train of thought. So, uh, yeah, coming through now to fit the uh, the slick tyres. And we're going to get held up a little bit there. Yes, we are. Now, this time it is a 2.9. So, the last one, I believe, was a 1.9 stop. So that extra second is not going to help us whatsoever. And uh, we were very, very tentative in this sort of first sector. Uh, definitely coming out of the pit lane. I really wasn't sure how dry it was. And uh, yeah, you can see I'm not really on full throttle coming out of the pit lane. And sure enough, come lap 34, we just don't seem to have the pace in the dry. In the wet, we were literally, we were definitely the fastest car on the circuit. But in these dry conditions, just like in qualifying, Alonso has proven that he is quicker than us. And the gap is now under a second. He has the DRS and he's going to make a move on lap 35 down the inside for the lead of the race. We had such a big gap up front. But this time we, we've made the move down the inside and uh, we sort of played the played the switchback move. We let him overtake us. But now on the same straight, he is also going to get past us. His engine seems to be working a lot better than ours and he has completely done us there. And uh, he's going to have the DRS as well, as the, fa the fastest laps are just being set left, right and centre at the moment. But just look at Alonso streaking into the distance with the DRS. We've got just one and a half laps to try and stay with him as we nearly outbreak ourselves there. But now we've just got to go, got to go absolutely ham to try and get this victory. And at the same point, once again, there was an overtake behind us. Barrichello actually got out of the pits ahead of Hakkinen. But Hakkinen makes no mistake, once again gets past the Brazilian and he is hungry for that P3. Barrichello, remember, started in P22, so he can't be too disheartened with fourth place, but he's definitely going to want that podium and chase it down in the final lap and a half. So, uh, yeah, he will get another chance. Whether he gets it is another matter, but on to lap 36, we don't get the DRS. And Alonso, I'm just going to hold my hands up, was just quicker than me. He, uh, he had the better race car uh, in the dry. We had the better car in the wet. But, uh, yeah, we, we <laughs> look, we made a lot of strategic gambles. And I cannot complain with P2 whatsoever. Uh, you know, we, we, we stuck it out on the Ultra Softs at the start. If we hadn't have done, we would have struggled to get points. So, uh, yeah, can't complain. Uh, got to big up Jeff for the, uh, the big information on the team radio. But uh, you can see we are just trying to wriggle the car around this track and do whatever we can to try and get past Alonso in the final stages. But as we come round the final corner, we are within DRS range, but it isn't going to be enough. Fernando Alonso comes round the final corner to take victory. His first win of the series and Renault's first big point scoring uh, race. Hakkinen takes P3 and last to four for Rubens Barrichello. But there you can see the Renault guys are pretty happy. And damn right, they should be. A very, very good performance for them. Fernando Alonso is a race winner once again in Formula 1. There you can see the famous Spanish helmet in the Renault colours. But uh, yeah, what a race that was. Changeable conditions really have brought out the best in these cars. And there you can see all of the top five have made up positions uh, with myself obviously starting in P9, Hakkinen starting 19th, Barrichello starting at the back, Andretti also starting well down the field. He finished fifth and Prost finally gets his first points of the season uh, there in sixth place. As we look down the bottom half of the field, Lewis Hamilton couldn't even convert his pole position into points. He stopped a ridiculous number of times. Uh, Schumacher, also no points for him or my teammates. So what that means for the standings is that I now have a 22-point lead up at the front. So that sort of compensates for the, the bad race, which I will inevitably have at some point uh, ahead of Lauda. Andretti as well is up into P3. But uh, considering we're five rounds in, the points total isn't really that big. Um, so yeah, we, we've got like over double the points of Andretti in third. So yeah, we've done pretty well to, to sort of be consistent over the course of this championship. No points for a lot of the runners there. And Hacken has actually pulled himself up into P5 as a result of that, uh, that, that good finish. And there you can see the constructors standing. Red Bull pull a gap out at the front ahead of Ferrari. No points for Mercedes today. And the big movers are Renault up into sixth on 38 points. And uh, yeah, what a race, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. Uh, I'll catch you guys in my next video. Do make sure to leave a like down below. But until then, guys, take care. Bye-bye.